Hi, room 15. This is chapter 12 called Isabella. Mrs. Frisbee spelled it out slowly. The plan of the rats of Nim. What or where was Nim? The name had a strange and faraway sound. Had these rats then come here from another place? Did that explain why they had books and electric lights and wires and an electric motor? Yet they had been here, or at least there had been rats here for as long as she could remember. Still, that was not so very long. She wondered what other things they had. Suddenly, she had almost overwhelming desire to look around, to see what was behind the other doors and down the other corridors. She went to the door, opened it, and looked out into the hall. It was entirely deserted and silent, except that when she listened carefully, she could hear a faint humming in the distance, as if something were running, another motor perhaps? She started out in the hall, into the hall, and then changed her mind. Better not. Nicodemus had been friendly. They had all been friendly, but explicit. He had said she was to wait in the library, and she was not there to pry, but to get help. She went back into the library, closed the door, and sat on one of the benches. The books on the table were mostly paperbacks, small enough so that the rats could handle them easily enough, but too big for her. So she sat in front of the blackboard and looked at it again. Beneath the title across the top in neatly chalked handwriting were columns of words and figures. So here's what she's looking at. So it says schedule, January, group one, oats, 30 loads. So it looks like they're kind of making a list of supplies that they would need. The rest of the blackboard was filled with more rows of figures, each headed by the name of a month, February, March, April, May, and so on through July. At the bottom, a separate square was ruled off. Plows, Arthur's group. So then there's another plow right there. It looks like different, um, different like types of food they're trying to collect. Mrs. Frisbee stared at all this, trying to make head or tail of it, but she could not. It was quite, quite incomprehensible. She was still puzzling over it when the door opened and a rat came in. It was a girl rat, small and quite young, judging by her looks. She was carrying a pencil and some paper and looking at the papers as she walked so that she did not see Mrs. Frisbee at first. When she did, she gasped and dropped the papers, scattering them on the floor. Her eyes opened wide. Who are you? she asked. I don't know you. How did you get in? She backed toward the door. It's all right, said Mrs. Frisbee. I'm a friend of Mr. Age's. The rat was very young indeed, only a child. But why are you in here? Who let you in? Nicodemus. He told me to wait here. The girl rat looked doubtful. You might be a spy. A spy? How could I be? A spy from where? I don't know, from outside, maybe from Nim. I don't even know what Nim is. That's what you say. But I don't. What is it? Asked Mrs. Frisbee, slightly annoyed. It's a place, it's a place, the girl rat said, her alarm apparently subsiding, began picking up her scattered papers. I'm supposed to be practicing my reading. What kind of place? It's where we came from. I don't know too much about it. I've never been there. How can you come from there if you've never been there? My father and mother did. I was born afterwards. I think it's white. Anyway, I know one thing. We don't want to go back. We don't want to get caught. So Mrs. Frisbee thought, that sounds as if whatever Nim was, the rats had escaped from it to come here. But she realized that she was not likely to get very clear information from such a child. Again, she hoped that Nicodemus would explain it. Did Nicodemus come from Nim too? Yes. And Justin? Yes. You know Justin? Yes, said Mrs. Frisbee. I guess you're not a spy, said the girl rat. She sounded mildly disappointed. Then she added irrelevantly, Justin's not married. She climbed on one of the benches and opened a book. He's the best one of all. He's not even afraid of dragon. She read in a book for perhaps 30 seconds, 30 seconds picked up her pencil, then put it down again. I'm too young to get married, she said. I suppose so, said Mrs. Frisbee, for a while yet, but that won't last long. That's what my mother says, but it seems long. And Justin might marry somebody else. Maybe not, said Mrs. Frisbee, who could see beyond the tip of her nose. He's pretty young himself yet. What's your name? Isabella. It's a pretty name. It's all right. Only my brother calls me Izzy, and I don't like that. I don't wonder. Where's your brother? At the meeting. He's older. All the men are at the meeting, but my mother didn't go. The mothers don't always go. She's in the grain room picking grain, packing grain. Packing grain? For the plan. She doesn't like the plan, though. Ah, uh, the plan again, Mrs. Frisbee thought. What is the plan? Why doesn't she like it? It's just the plan for where we're going to live and all that. She doesn't like it because she says it's too hard. No more running water, but she isn't deserting or anything, not like Jenner. We didn't like Jenner. 
Who's Jenner? He was in the group, but he quit. Maybe he went back to Nim. We don't know. Mrs. Rizzi was gradually getting a picture of life in the rat colony. A somewhat confusing one because Isabella was a child, but nonetheless, certain things were apparent. They had a grain room, presumably for food storage. The females sometimes went to meetings and sometimes not. Nicodemus seemed to be the leader. They had a plan for the future that some rats did not like, and one named Jenner had deserted. Or had others gone with him? She was about to ask Isabella when the library door opened and Nicodemus, Justin, and Mr. Ages entered. Another rat came with them, a stranger. All right, that was chapter 12.